let's review past and future tense verbs. Remember, a past, past tense verb tells about an action that has already happened. For example, the word danced. It has the ED at the end. When I see the word danced, I know that this happened in the past because it has ED there. A future tense verb tells about an action that is going to happen. For example, will dance. So if you see this, will in front of a verb like dance, it's saying it will happen in the future. What can you do to most verbs to show that the action already happened? You can add the ED. What can you do to a verb to show the action will happen in the future? Well, will is the key word here. You can put will in front of it. So here we can see the ED at the end in past tense verbs. And for a verb that will happen in the future, we put will in front. Let's take a look here. I want you to tell me if it's a past tense sentence, or sorry, a past tense verb or a future tense verb. The sentence says, yesterday Bob raced Lance around the track. Okay, go ahead. Is that a past tense or a future tense? It's a past tense because it has that ED. Let's take a look at the next one. I will brush my dog on Monday. Past tense or future tense? Future tense because it has the will. Last one, I rested on a nice cot. It's past tense. Why is it past tense, though? It has that ED at the end. And when we see that ED, we know it's a past tense verb. The last thing I want us to review is that when a writer uses three or more words in a list, there is a comma after all but the last word. Look at this sentence, and I want you to tell me where the comma belongs and how many and how many we're going to need. So it says, I will write five, nine, and six on the slate. Where does one comma go? Well, we have to separate these three numbers from each other. So a comma goes after the five. Where else? After the nine. We don't put one after the six because it says all but the last word that's listed. So I will write five, comma, nine, comma, and six on the slate.